So any football, baseball, basketball, soccer, hockey, wrestling, volleyball, whatever, you got to have permission or you got to have it in the correct spot in your vehicle while it's on school property. Now, just to touch base, I've talked about this in other videos. I was a victim of car theft. Somebody broke into my car. What the law says is it being properly secured in your vehicle, meaning your vehicle locked in the glove box of the console, that's properly secured. But hence, where do you think most of your criminals get their firearms from? Breaking into vehicles. So just take your security to another level, get a good safe. What's up everybody? Today we're going to be talking about carrying a handgun on the school property. Okay, this is just a little dummy gun. Slide doesn't work, it just shoots a little laser out of it. Okay, yes, I did discuss this in a different uh, carry law video uh, talking about uh, places you have to get permission. Okay, but I wanted to go in and single out this section just with everything that's kind of been going on uh, over the past few weeks here to give everybody a better understanding of having a handgun on school property, okay? So I'm, I'm only giving you what the law says, all right? I'm not wanting to get start, spark any kind of Second Amendment debate or anything like that, okay? I'm just going to give you what the law says because it's a legal system, not a justice system. It's up to you on how you interpret it. I'm going to kind of explain how I interpret it. And my interpretation is based off of my experience and then also uh, speaking with some self-defense attorneys that I know. All right. So it's up to you on how you interpret it. If you want to go talk to a lawyer, I would definitely recommend finding one that uh, handles self-defense cases, uh, but definitely feel free to reach out, do your own research, but I'm just letting you what the laws say, all right? Legal system, not a justice system. So it is unlawful for anyone to carry a handgun onto the premises or property on operated or controlled by a private or public school, college, university, okay, technical college, any other kind of post secondary institution, uh, all right, different things like that, okay, without the expressed written permission of the authorities in charge. You got to get permission. I've had some people ask me, all right, where, where do I go and get this permission? When I've asked for permission before, I started to write there at whoever uh, was working at the front desk when I walked into the school. Most of the time, they would end up going and getting the resource officer. The resource officer would come out and talk to me and pretty much tell me, no, it's not gonna happen. Okay, if you'd like to go over their heads with it, you know, you can definitely reach out to, you know, the superintendent of the school district. You can reach out to the school board, all right, and go that direction. I don't think reaching out to uh, the police chief or sheriff is going to benefit you. It might. Uh, I would definitely keep it with the superintendent, school board, things like that, member of the school board, just kind of go from there. Uh, but I always just started right there at the front desk. They would go and get the resource officer and they would pretty much tell me, no, I don't have permission. All right, but don't just take verbal permission. Remember, it needs to be written or typed and signed. Again, do not just take verbal permission. I cannot stress that enough. It needs to be written or typed 
okay, depending on what they want to do, and it needs to have a signature on it. Now, if it's a signature, like an electronic signature done through like DocuSign or, you know, something like that, if you know what I'm talking about, that's fine. Or handwritten, if they type it up, print it up, take it in there, hey, I need your signature on this. Right, it is written and signed. Now that can be written on anything, post-it note, sticky note, uh, copy paper, notebook paper, doesn't have to be on any type of letterhead document looking all official. But now, as a person carrying a handgun, it is legal to carry your handgun in your vehicle onto the school property, okay? But before you get onto the school property, it's got to be secured in the proper spots in the vehicle before you get on the school grounds, okay? Now, these spots are different than what it is when you are away from school ground, okay? So it's gotta be in a closed glove box, a closed console or in a container with an integral fastener in the luggage compartment of the vehicle. Your luggage compartment will be dictated by your vehicle. If it's a car, it'll be the trunk. If it's a crossover SUV, a van, uh, anything like that, it's gonna be the cargo area all the way in the back, station wagon, kind of the same thing trucks it's going to depend on the size of your cab okay because the bed is not necessarily considered the luggage compartment so like i said yes the new state law because of constitutional carry says you can have your handgun anywhere in your vehicle but when you get on the school property and you're going to park on school property it's got to be secured in the glove box console or container with an integral fastener in the luggage compartment of the vehicle. Now, this is coming out of section 16-23-20 if you ever go in there and actually look this up. So again, section 16-23-20, all right? A, it is unlawful whether or not the person has a concealed carry permit for anyone to carry about their person any handgun, whether concealed or not, unless otherwise authorized specifically by law. All right, that's what it says. I'm giving you what the code says. You can go look it up if you want, okay? All right, now, school or college athletic event not related to firearms so that's what all that means so you cannot go to a school or college athletic event not related to firearms so any football baseball basketball soccer hockey wrestling volleyball whatever you got to have permission or you got to have it in the correct spot in your vehicle while it's on school property now, just to touch base, I've talked about this in other videos. I was a victim of car theft. Somebody broke into my car. What the law says is it being properly secured in your vehicle, meaning your vehicle locked in the glove box of the console, that's properly secured. But hence, where do you think most of your criminals get their firearms from? Breaking into vehicles. So just take your security to another level, get a good safe. Please take it to another level. Get a good safe. All right, now we're going to look at section 16 23 420 E. All right, for the purpose of this section, it goes over the term premise and property. Okay, so it does not include state or locally owned or maintained roads, streets, or right of ways running through. All right, the adjacent premise or property owned or operated or controlled by a private, all right, or 
public school, college, university, technical college, or other post-secondary institution which are open to full-time uh, public vehicular traffic. So pretty much that means if you're driving through the school or college property, you're fine to have the gun on your person. And yes, with the change of constitutional carry, this is 18 or older, are allowed to have a concealed handgun in their glove box, console, or luggage compartment in a container with an integral fastener. Integral means it's got to be attached to the container. Okay, you can't just go get a Tupperware container and wrap duct tape or a belt around it. Now, Part C, a person who violates the provisions of this section is guilty of a felony. Yes, a felony. That means it's bad. Upon conviction, must be fined no more than $5,000 or imprisoned more than five years or both. So yes, you can be fined if you violate this up to $5,000 and five years in jail. And if, again, if you're convicted, that is a felony. You're never gonna legally be around firearms. Like I said, I'm only letting you know what the law says and how I'm interpreting it. And that is off of my experience. People that I know that are in law enforcement, self-defense attorneys, all right, these, this is how that I'm interpreting it. It's up to you on how you interpret it. All right, this is why I wanted to single this thing out with everything that's been going on here lately so you have an understanding of what your rights are when it comes to having a handgun on your person on school property. So this is why I recommend making sure you are a member of USCCA, All right? If you don't like them, that's fine. I'm not here to make you like them. There's other groups out there where you can become a member. And what I say is it's legal defense for self-defense, All right? Why I like USCCA, why I'm certified through them, why I'm an official partner with them, is they also have some great training options available as well too. Their training programs are freaking phenomenal. So definitely check it out. I'm gonna throw their link somewhere up on the screen here. Go read about it, check them out, see what they have, all right? But I hope this helps everybody give you a good understanding of what your rights are when it comes to school property. I gave you what the codes and what parts they are and what they say. Again, if you're on school property and you want to carry outside of your vehicle, you got to get permission. Do, do not, do not carry that gun on your person and go get that permission because that falls under improper carry and you can be arrested. And if you're convicted of that, that's another felony. Okay, so get the permission first, then go and get your gun. If you have questions about any of this, comment below, reach out to me using my link tree that I've got provided in the description. It's all over my website, all right, it's everywhere. Please feel free to reach out to me, I'll be glad to help you, but I'm only letting, again, I'm only letting you know what the legal system says, it's up to you on how you interpret it. So I wanna thank you for watching, all right, I hope this has helped. Please make sure you comment, like, subscribe, share. All the support, that any support that you can give is greatly appreciated. All right, don't forget about our affiliates, Excess Sites, No Other Choice, and Core Essential. I'll have their links up here with all of my promo codes as well. Go check them out. Anything and everything you need is right there on all three of those, all three of those websites, and you're getting a discount. And make sure you remember, folks, if you're not shooting, you're reloading. If you're not reloading, you're fighting. If you're not fighting, you're dead. Train to live. See you on the range.